Hello everyone, Nikas here for your live electronic music tutorial. It's episode 161, this is the seventh day of our progressive house week and we're going to complete the week by mastering one of the tracks that I made. It is the layered progressive house. In the previous episode on Saturday, I actually did um, arrange the track and mix the track, so now it is a final product. I imported it into Logic Pro X, you can see it here. And I can see right away that the mix is, is quite clean, there's not much bump, it's pretty even, it's gonna be a nice mastering session, guys. A little bit more about those sessions, I already made 160 other episodes that you should check, guys, and if you get a second, smash that like button, it's gonna help other people to see those shows that I believe are pretty interesting for any producers from really beginner to advanced, you know, there's always something to learn in this function. So that's it guys, I'm gonna master that track, I'm gonna use Waves plugins. Personally, I've been using those plugins for about 15 years, I developed this mastering chain for, yeah, about 17 years now that I use Waves and you know, I have a certain chain that I do, I modify it with time, change the character and I'm also evolving, understanding the attack and the release of the, the phase in Lin and B and the, really to give that really consistent sound that is not overboard, it will sound very well in every song system, I think it's very interesting. And of course guys, this template will be available on our site, it's gonna be a Progressive House mastering template, so if you make Progressive House, you want to master it, you can take it, drop your track in it, and tweak it, maybe watch this video along it, and you're gonna get to understand the processes that are involved into mastering this Progressive House track. So, I do master in headphones because I cannot have the speakers on because I have the mic, obviously, if you guys understand this principle. It's a good start. I do have very reliable, here's those headphones I used for many, many years. Actually, it's the second pair of these. So I can count in years seven years that I use those headphones. It's, it's a pretty good reference to me. Uh, I also have my analyzer there that gives me like a really good overview of what is happening in the frequency. What I'm looking for for this type of track is punch. You know, I want it to be punchy, I want the kick to be there, I still want it to be compressed and contained and loud, of course, because you know, if we're competing with the beatboard other tracks and stuff. And by the way, guys, I will also use this track before. I didn't even found a name yet, but it will be out and I will let you know in another episode. Let's get started, guys. Let's have a bit of a listen. It is completely flat. Absolutely no compression on the out. I keep them super clean. You can see the loudness here. I have a lot of headroom. I think this would make a track interesting when you have room. Very good. It definitely needs some mastering. I like that it's open, that the drums are really present and powerful, so we're gonna have room to play with here. While compressing them and containing them, we're still gonna keep this punch. Let's just go to the bass. There's a good amount of, of air in it, it's clean. So for this track is layered, it's very, it's, it's, I wouldn't call it minimal progressive house, but it's, it doesn't have so much, it's not the goal. The goal is the groove, which is this bass and those, those tab elements at the top, plus the other harmonics that are moving together. I'm going to try to capture this, make the best out of it, and then in the break it goes down to be only this bass with quite a bit of automation. Let's just listen to this and let's get started. Coming back nicely after the break, this is nice. Okay, so first I'm gonna go into this, which is just a summing EQ, so I'm putting it on to literally raise the volume. 
of the track because I have a lot of headroom, I want to make sure there's no peaks. So I, if I have some peaks, I can do auto trim here. It's simple, I can run the track at any moment, trim it. So I have as much loudness as I can going into the first phase, which is this, which is a very, very nice EQ for mastering. So the first thing that I do is I, I give it a bit of warm here with, with this EQ. It has this character. It is a replica of a... I don't even remember if it was a Neve EQ or... I don't know, it's a very famous, famous rack EQ. With, without. Oh, definitely, definitely... Like, has some smoothness, so... Want some smoothness? Great. I have a linear EQ there, just in case there would be something I wanted to do. I have a little setting to bring a bit more air here, but I don't need it. Not for this track. I'm gonna go straight into an L2, just to, to I would, I'm not gonna say, to, to cut the peak. So there is some peaks like this snare, There's some peaks that I just want to diminish a little bit before I go into my multi-phase, so the multi-phase won't have to work as hard. Oh, here, I got a little bit of a peak. This is the process of attenuating, limiting, maximizing and compressing a little bit at the time. Never, for, for my, my personal rule is 3 dB at the most, and even at 3 I'm a little bit, you know. So here, I have 2.3 dB, only the peaks. It's, it's nothing else, so... Then of course I have some gain here, because to go from the master to, to this, to be able to feed our chain, we need some volume. Now, we're gonna go into this adaptive uh, linear multi-band, so it's, it's, it's an EQ compressor, it's, it's many things at the same time, it does an amazing job at putting everything in phase. I have my setting here, I want to make sure that the kick and everything stay punchy so I can play with the with the threshold if I need here. Bring it up. I'm gonna give myself a bit more volume. So without. A lot cleaner, a lot more air. So if I play with the threshold of my kick and I would like to really push the kick back. It is still there, but it's not what we're looking for. It's a dance track, so I don't want to I don't want to affect the kick too much, just a little bit. Contain it without. I think there's a bit of kick here, so I'm also gonna give it some room to for it to be able to punch through. that bass, I like it. It's a bit old school, it has some grit. I know on a big sound system, oof, that would shake people. Only here, here. Very clean, I like it. Then we're going into an API where really gonna really go very little without just want a little bit of compression just a tiny bit a bit of character of this too and I have another console EQ which I don't think I will use but I'll turn it on for fun this is if I really wanted to push the track I mean it might sound better You're like ooh, this is bright and this and that Sorry guys, we're doing mastering. <laughs> we, we're not overblowing the track so everybody's impressed in the room. We want the room to be contained, to be clean, to be able to play on any sound system, including mono. 
that is a very interesting and important plugin. So without. So here I'm adding quite a few dB to the side. So we have much more dimension and width to the track. While we still maintain the low in the middle. Without. It's a bit fad, width. Definitely added some extra dimension. And after I do this, right away I have a crammer tape, which I will not use. And then I compress it after this, this phase of... Uh, and I like to change this compressor to auto. So it reacts a little bit better to the program. Again, 2 dB, without. See, to me it's a bit vague. Well, if I put it on, it's glued. It's really is one track. It, all the elements just kind of squeeze together. After this, we're going into our second linen B, which is a bit crazy. But if it's used properly, it works. It is a completely different, a completely different attack and release. So give a completely different character. For me, this is containment. This is to make sure that the track will play well as much on a little earbud as on a big speaker as on a live PA. Oops. Let's make sure we preserve our loudness again. We're, we're not so loud yet, we're still gonna have room to use the Break. Let's go into the build. Mm, it's coming out very strong, coming back in. Nice the intro. Oh, the kick. Without? No, nah, much more focus. This is what's up. We still have some room here. Gonna go into the very final stage of this mastering chain, guys. Right here, L316. Put it up like this put it minus 0.2 because this is where we want it to be at the end and then actually no I put this one at zero turn it on doesn't affect the sound just yet and then bring it down until you have signal loss at least waves say this so I already heard it in the low end so and what do I want I want maybe 4 dB not much more so let's bring it up guys. Oh, sorry, I've done the wrong move. 3.8 here. And then out ceiling here. So we're on. So I think I think we're still in the safe zone for for iTunes, mastered for iTunes, minus 12 here, I think it's gonna go up a little bit more here. Minus 9, still good. It's not overly super extra loud. We could bring it down a little bit. Down that mean up because the more we affect it, and you can look at it, it doesn't do so much work at all, which is great. That means that the track was well produced, was well put together, there's nothing exceeding the frequency.
sounds very good guys this is a nice track and this is gonna be it for episode 161 of your live electronic music tutorials if this is your first episode watching this you're like oh this guy is mastering a track usually i do create music in real time most of the time from complete scratch so this is just a continuity this is day seven of our progressive week so I think uh, the first progressive week was success, so next week I will continue with another week, but the most important thing, guys, is made it sound good with you. 